In this lesson, I'm going to introduce how supply for a particular good can be represented using a linear supply equation. We're going to be looking at the market for beef today, for which we have a supply schedule here. As you can see, as the price of beef increases, the quantity that farmers are willing and able to produce increases as well. This of course reflects the law of supply, which was explained in an earlier video. Let's go ahead and plot some points from our supply schedule on the graph on the right here. At a price of one dollar, zero kilograms of beef will be supplied. However, at two dollars, twenty kilograms will be provided. At three dollars, fifty kilograms will be provided, and so on. I'll go ahead and plot the rest of the points from our supply schedule here, and we can draw our supply curve. With the points I have put on this graph, we can now draw our linear supply curve. We now have the supply of beef as represented in both a table and on a graph as a curve. The question now is how can we derive a supply equation from the information in this table and from the line on this graph? Let's look at the generic supply equation as we have here up in the upper left and then we'll talk about what the different variables in our supply equation represent. A generic supply equation can be expressed as the quantity supplied of a good equals C plus D times the price. The question is what do the C variables and the D variables in our supply equation represent? Let's start with the C variable. The C variable in the supply equation represents the quantity intercept of the supply curve. In other words, if our supply curve were, were to continue all the way down to the quantity axis, what quantity would the supply curve be crossing the axis at? Let's look over at our graph and see what that's referring to. As we can see, the supply curve does not actually intersect the quantity axis in the visible range of our graph. That's because if the price of beef were zero, obviously zero kilograms of beef would be provided. No producers would be willing and able to supply beef at a price of zero. However, if we were to continue our supply curve beyond the price axis, all the way to the point where it intercepted the quantity axis, what quantity would be supplied at a price of zero? We're going to show how to calculate this quantity in a moment. So it should be pointed out that the C variable will always be negative. Since at a price of zero, no producers are generally willing or able to provide a good. There are some exceptions to this rule. For example, if producers of a good are receiving subsidies from governments, it's possible that even if the price of the good is zero, a positive quantity will be provided by firms. So in the case of subsidies, the C variable may be positive. But usually it's going to be negative because no firms are willing or able to produce a good when the price of the good is zero. The next variable in our supply equation is the D variable. The D variable is similar to the B variable in the demand equation. Another word for the D variable is the price coefficient of supply. This represents how responsive producers are to a particular increase in the price of the good. This is not the slope of the supply curve, rather this is the inverse of the slope of the supply curve. The D variable represents not the rise over run as it would in a typical algebraic equation of y equals mx plus b. Rather, in this case, it represents the run over the rise. In other words, it is the change in quantity divided by the change in price between two points along our supply curve or our supply equation. The higher the D variable, the more responsive producers are to price changes and the flatter the supply curve will be. The lower the D variable, on the other hand, the less responsive producers are to price changes and the steeper the supply curve will be. So keep in mind the D variable is not the slope. It is not rise over run, rather it is run over rise. We're gonna start by showing how to calculate the D variable in a supply equation. It's quite a simple calculation since we know it is simply the change in quantity over the change in price between two points in our supply curve. So all we need to do is identify two price and two quantities from our supply table 
and we can then calculate the D variable. I'll highlight two points along our supply schedule and use those to calculate the D variable. So all I have to do to find D is find the change in quantity between these two points, that's 110 minus 80, and divide it by the change in price between the same two points. So as the price goes from $4 to $5, I see the quantity supplied increase from 80 to 110. This gives me a D variable of 30 divided by one, our D variable in the supply equation for beef is therefore 30. I now know that the quantity supplied of beef equals C plus 30 times P. The 30 tells me that for every $1 increase in the price of beef, I can expect to see a 30 kilogram increase in the quantity that farmers are willing and able to supply. All I need to do now is find my C variable in my supply equation and I will have derived the equation representing the supply of beef. To do this, all I need to do is plug in a price and quantity combination from my supply schedule into the equation that I currently have. So I'll go ahead and use this combination right here. I know that when the quantity supplied is 80, the price is $4. So I plug in 4 and 80 into my supply equation, and now all I have to do is solve for C. To do that, I must just simplify this equation. I know that 80 equals C plus 120. Therefore, C equals 80 minus 120, which is minus 40. I now have my complete supply equation. The C variable, in other words, the quantity intercept of supply is negative 40. In this video, we started with only a supply schedule, which we then plotted on a supply graph. Once we had the supply graph, we could extend the supply curve beyond the price axis and show that the Q-intercept of supply is actually negative. To find out what that Q-intercept was, we first had to find the D variable, which is the change in quantity divided by the change in price, and then we plugged in one price quantity combination from our supply schedule to calculate the C variable of negative 40. What we ended up with is the equation representing the supply of beef. The quantity supplied of beef always equals negative 40 plus 30 times the price of beef. In the next video, we'll talk about how to calculate the price intercept using a linear supply equation, which tells us the price at which producers will be willing to start producing the good. In addition, we'll talk about what happens when there are changes in either the C variable or the D variable in the supply equation.